Hello, Internet. Welcome to yet another Wednesday serial. This time I'm talking about the others, the indie pile, however you want to look at it. Um, first up, I know I had a rant about this. Um, I did end up getting at least the initial Battle Chasers uh, refresh comics. Um, and uh, it's such a weird thing. So this is like a fine comic if you want fantasy by way of D, &D which is a fair amount of comics the problem is i guess with battle chasers a this is no longer joe Madarero doing art and having just bought a trade to refresh myself and seeing that i how do i put it it's one of those places where like there's nothing necessarily wrong with the art i don't even think it would be bad but when your expectation is a certain thing and the imagery is so different and in this case it's fine but there it's not the passion or the love letter or the need to prove oneself which was everything battle chasers was with that kind of newer anime-ish brought into more american comics look with all the color and everything it was really fresh and new and exciting when it came out, which was before I even read it, and that was a lifetime ago. And now this coming out is like three other books also being published by Image. And um, I, I don't know, it just it doesn't excite, and it's really weird because they're like a few issues in, and they're like, Oh, we're taking a bit of a break, but we'll come back. And it's like, <laughs> they didn't take the time to get maybe a few months ahead with the uh, decades off. Um, I don't know. It just, it's a lot of sour grapes. It's a lot of whether or not you're willing to be on board and having read through it and trying to find what was special in it. I find myself liking it less than when I did when I was younger. Uh, being less enthralled by the art even going back to it maybe i've changed maybe the industries i don't know um and picking up i think now what i recognize is a lot of D, D stuff whereas before i had no recognition of D, &D. it was all fresh and new and i didn't really like D, D then but i also didn't know to care and now i do and it's just i don't know not for me um the sacrificers was a Rick Remender book not for me this whole thing was a tale of people being put in the pits and economic woe and class status and whatnot kind of told with these little funny bird alien creatures and it's a fine comic like artistically it's there but there is nothing fun here there's nothing exciting or quite the opposite and nothing that makes me want to continue on um, I will end up getting another couple issues because they've already been ordered, but um, yeah, no, not not so much for me. A little more, uh, I don't know, tickling some part of the brain, I guess. Uh, this is just a fun noir take. It's part of the whole gun honey thing that has been kind of bigger in that side of comics right now. Um, I think it's done really well. And it's really fun so you'll see the other one come up later um overall i would recommend these but m most of the stories are like five issue minis and the trades are collected I, I no surprise for me but i mean especially here like the trades are totally the way to go um the schlub uh <sighs> This is funny. This feels like something that would have come out in the 90s. Um, there's this um, dweeby Dennis guy and then the big imposing superhero who's a paragon of virtue and has like no personality. Um, and they do a body swap. And so we're playing with that. And I think as we go, we'll see them learn from each other. Yada yada should be interesting. It's all played for gimmicks and laughs and whatnot. I'm sure this won't be an amazing ongoing for years and years. But for a short run, you know, a 
I think there's a little more here than just a few quick laughs, maybe, but um, I don't know. It's something I enjoyed. Uh, click, click, boom continues. I don't really know what to say about this one other than just it continues. The story of this girl who's caught up with murders only takes photos and her other characters caught up in everything. Um, it's an interesting story and curious to see where it goes next. Um, Heat Seeker, that was the gun honey thing. Another one on this side for this story. And those covers are uh, solid it for him. So... Doo -doo -doo. Then there was The Call, uh, Kelly Thompson's next big um, idea. And very in line with a lot of what we've been getting from Image. It's these character-driven kind of horror suspense books. Maybe more suspense here, sorry. I, I, I got horror vibes. Um, I don't know. But it felt like by the time this was going to get going, we were at the last page. So this first issue sucks. Um, that doesn't mean the book overall is going to at all, though. But I mean, this first issue is like we get introduced to some characters and then we're done. Um, I, it, it's just I, I keep hanging on it every month. But I mean, like the schlub was a good single issue. This does not stand on its own, nor does it feel like it's meant to in any way. And they should just, for some of these books, stop releasing them like this. Just get together the trade, charge more for it, especially initially, and put it out. I don't know. Um, something that did stand on its own, but I didn't love as much, was the first issue of uh, Christopher Chaos. And I got two this month. Um, it's continuing forward. I'm going to wind out on the series it's an interesting kind of take on a superhero play who's more in like a horror universe on his own um I don't know, it's a it's an all right book um i know it's gotten some interesting attention because of the creators and because of the, kind of the positioning and i think the timing of it um i don't know i just don't think uh, you'll be hearing much about it in a few years there's nothing there's nothing in it that's really making it stand out to me it's trying to make a big deal of the fact that it's a gay superhero it's hardly the first gay superhero or prominent com um character like that in a comic but it is another one and maybe it's a healthier character dive with that and is prominently that character it's not like north star or something um but I don't know. But sometimes it's important to have some of that just for the moment, too. I don't know. Um, probably more so for other people. Um, Barnstormers um, is actually taking what kind of felt like a flight of fancy with incredible art uh, forward. This we get a little more of actually going with the story. The fact that this is only three giant, but three issues is actually disappointing not because just i'm liking it and i want more but i feel like honestly four issues would allow them to take some of the plot threads that are here because they have to wind it all down and end it in the next one and it even if it is a satisfying ending it just kind of can only go so far with where it is right now and kind of given the page count and everything um i feel like maybe actually adding in a few more threads and ideas to this would have allowed it to reach a potential that I think it had, and it just didn't necessarily have the space to explore some of it at the depth at which it is exploring what it is. Um, and I think it's good that it's moving at the pace it is to allow the characters to breathe, to allow the situations to not just be two panels like old comics, but to actually live in things for a moment and um, have the emotional backup. I think writing a comic with art like this, like, um, you know, an old 60s comic would be a mistake, um, but it is relatively snappy. I mean, even if you treat this issue like two issues, then three it would be six. Um, I'm just saying like eight, you know, uh, would allow for something that I think is going to be somewhat special but could have really gone a, just a little bit further and had so much more i'm begging on anyways 
um antarctica i i'm curious i i know i'm going to continue this i kind of lost the thread because this just became kind of a suspense thriller as opposed to less of an exploratory idea i from the first issue i kind of got more of an idea of this being a uh more of a science fiction than a like a suspense horror high action something with maybe a little lower a little lower stakes i mean lives at stake but more through environmental environment versus man than man versus man as much um and here it's just gonna be man versus man and i don't know it's uh it's interesting because part of the reason i'm buying some obviously non-marvel non-dc is to get some non-marvel non-dc kind of stuff in the diet of my comics and what i've been finding is reaching out for these image minis or whatnot i feel like i'm starting to develop a better taste especially after having read a lot of what you see behind you and whatnot of more where my tastes are and i feel like i've reached a point where i'm feeling less experimental or maybe more so in some ways but if i'm going to be doing those things because i've been banging on it for month after month it finally clicked to my head like oh why don't i just look for a trade or two per order for me and do something like that so i'm i'm thinking i'm going to try to stick that obviously i'm going to play out a lot of what you saw in this video a lot of its five issue minis or whatever wrap that up um but then i'm not saying none but I know when I've kind of gotten like, ooh, that looks interesting, kind of like, I feel like I'm ordering a lot of Marvel and DC and I want to do something a little different. Oh, eh. um, Which sucks because the, my go-to example is East versus West. I got the first four or five issues of East versus West and it just did not click with me. And then I had some friends who were, kept recommending it and saying, it's great, it's great. Um, but they only would read in trades. And so I read the first two trades. And then I got it. Um, and it's that kind of a thing. Also, I have so much to read. I acquired so much, especially through the pandemic, you know. Um, trying to trying to focus a little and enjoy what I'm reading. Maybe that is just a buttload of Marvel, but if that's where I'm at right now, that's where I'm at right now. But as I play through and read through. I'll start wanting different things. I mean, Usagi's been my big thing recently, which felt like something I needed to do for years, but now that I'm here, I'm loving it. Um, I just tried reading Batman Odyssey, which is something that's been on my plate for years, and I couldn't even be bothered to finish it. Uh, it was just... It wasn't even fun schlock. It was just terrible. Um, I don't know. I'm just... Uh, maybe I'm just getting older. I don't know. But uh, I'm just thinking about some of this stuff a little differently, and I'm a little uh, kind of fed up, I guess, with the burn and churn, and I want to enjoy comics for comics' sake and not feel like I'm supporting the industry for no real enjoyment of it. So, yeah, I don't know. Curious what you think, especially about that last part. Let me know. But uh, cheers. Hope you're having a good one. I'll be back relatively soon with another comic review if there's anything in particular you wanted to hear me talk about please do also in the description i'm going to include a link um damien eric from longbox reviews and i talked about not directly to but around um kirby's omac run eight issues and that was a trip so if you want to hear more of my voice for some reason there you go i i can't imagine why but i'll i'll let let you make that decision cheers thanks